Well, hi there. Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we want to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we continue on in our Bible study of the call to ministry related to having the right attitude. Okay. And we've been talking about the seven things that lead to living that right life coming from a right attitude, which was purpose, praise, price, power, perspective, and last week we did perseverance. Yes, yes. So that's going to lead us now to the last of those P letters mm -hmm. from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians. God is so cool. Yes, he is. For consuming fire, he's a mighty cool guy. Yes. Hallelujah. But before we do that, Brother Mark's going to ask our God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Yes, we do. We thank you for our life here and our eternal life in the future. Just bless this Bible study so we can see more of your word to appreciate all of it. Amen. Amen. By the way, I'm living my eternal life now. <laughs> so anyhow, as we ended last week, as I said, we, we, we finished up on that topic of perseverance, enduring till the end, mm -hmm. as Jesus said. And I was just about to share something because uh, I don't know why it came to my mind, so I made a note of it. I want to do it now. Okay. Alice and I, um, for, for many years, we, we were based in England for half the year, so we could minister in the UK and uh, Europe and Venice. Africa and wherever. Uh, and we always attended a conference in North Wales that had been started by Arthur Burt, mm -hmm. dear Arthur Burt, who is now blessed to have gone on to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Living eternity. Amen. So one year we were over there, one, uh, we were at a conference, and I was talking and I was sharing the fact that because we go over there and we would go for like half the year, uh, Alice and I, we would purchase a car when we got there, mm -hmm. which is, I'm, I'm talking about a used car. Typically, we'd get a car that was 10, 11 years old, around 100,000 miles, and because that was, as opposed to renting a car for six months, yes. that's uh, quite the economy. And God blessed us every time with the cars that we had, mm -hmm. we, we, which we purchased. But I, so I became familiar with uh, one of the rules, regulations, and laws of the United Kingdom is that each and every year you have to have on your car an inspection, a thorough inspection, testing everything in the car, and it's called an MOT. The MOT stands for Ministry of Transportation and because they regulate it. So we had just had that done on a car that we bought. And we were in this conference, and we were talking about, you know, why God brings us together for like, you know, for, for that. And it's a, it's a conference of roughly 100 people, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it has struck me, having just done that MOT, that's exactly what God was doing. Yes. <laughs> he had brought us together to Already do our, ins our annual inspection. <laughs> MOT didn't stand for Ministry of Transportation. No. It stood for to modify our thinking. That's right. So I mean, that's true. I mean, yeah, that's one of the great good. things about fellowship in a, in a situation like that. It comes together. It gives us opportunity to hear what's going on in the lives of other brothers and sisters right. and them sharing what's going on and us to be able to share what's going on in our lives and ministry. But the purpose of it is because we are supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay, so that's an ongoing process. So what God does is he helps us to see what needs to be modified in our thinking. That's being transformed. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be transformed in your thinking, simply the best way I know to do that is in, well, this is the last P in the group, prayer. Yes. Because Prayer is going, having conversations with the Lord, and he can modify our thinking. Yes, he can. 
So I, we're going to talk this evening about prayer. We're going to start tonight about prayer. I think it'll take us more than one or two nights to do this. In Philippians, as I said, all of these things came from Philippians, and they all started with the letter P. So prayer. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, the Apostle Paul said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, that's another P there. Yes, it is. Because I'm going to tell you that prayer leads to peace. Mm. Well, because don't think that prayer is you going to talk to God. Because if that's your attitude towards prayer, I pray, I pray, that that will be changed over the course of this study. I don't want you to go talk to God. I want you to talk with God. Yes. Prayer is supposed to be conversation with God, okay? Listening more than speaking. Okay, because you know where the peace comes from? Mm -hmm. There's another P. That's right. David said it. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of praise. Yes. He was a man who had purpose in his life. Mm -hmm. And he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. The other P is the presence. Yes. When you are conscious of the presence of God in your life, that I'm telling you, this is when you when you're conscious, when you're walking with Him, you talk with Him. Mm -hmm. and that leads to the peace because of His presence in your life. If He's not present, who are you talking to? Who are you praying to? And I, I'll tell you, well, look at this. A lot of people are praying in the wrong direction. Yes. Okay. There is only one intercessor, one mediator mm -hmm. between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. If you're, you can talk to the Father, but if you're not talking through Jesus Christ, who is the only way to the Father, you might as well go talk to that wall, right? Because you'll get the, the results. The That's results. it. Yeah. So I, I also want to get this understanding, all right? Before we went overseas last year, last year, no, last year is 2017, 2016. the year before, yeah, just before we left, or perhaps when we got back, I don't know, it's hard to keep track of it all. Uh, Alice and I had come back, so we were, we were getting ready to leave, so we were living in motels, which was typical, we were living out of suitcase. Yeah, we did that before and after. Yeah, before and after. <laughs> and I had been invited to go preach in a, a, a to a congregation in Winter Park, Florida, where a dear brother of ours, Robert Dunlap, was the pastor. He's also going to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Boy, these guys, they got blessed. All right. So anyhow, when we got there, his, and it was interesting because we had, we had a real situation getting there. Because when we went down to the car, and we had a very reliable car, very nice car, here in the States, well, it wouldn't start on this Sunday morning. And uh, it was a real challenge. We had to have people come out a couple of times and give us a, a, a charge. The battery had gone dead. And we got to the church just in time, church building. Mm. And th the pastor's wife had gotten up, and she was getting ready to introduce me to come up and speak. But she said before that, she wanted to know if there was anybody that had needs in the congregation so that we could have prayer before I preached. And I stood up and I said, well, I, I'm asking, I would prefer if we would hold off on that. And we would pray afterwards. And I said, the reason for that is I, I honestly believe that all too often, we don't know what we should be praying for. Mm -hmm. And if you're not praying in faith, because we're supposed to pray believing, yes. but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I said, if you don't know what... Think about this. No matter what you feel like you need in your life at the moment, there is a song that should lead us into the proper prayer. Mm -hmm. Just a closer walk with thee. Yes. That's our great need. That's our, our true need is a closer relationship, a growing relationship with the Lord God Almighty. And it's so obvious and so clear and because Jesus said it in the Sermon on the Mount. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the rest shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. you. You don't even need to think about your need. He knows. 
before he, we even know. He knows before we can, before we know, before we can think, before we can ask. That's he knows right. what our needs are. Yes. So it's it's like that. That our focus should be our relationship with Jesus Christ, yeah. our relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. All the rest gets taken care of. Okay. So it's about trusting again. And we talked about this last week. Trusting in God's plan. Yes. Trusting in God's power. And trusting in God's timing for us. Mm. All right. Now, let me get into this a little bit by saying, without getting into too much detail, that temple prostitution was very, very common in the ancient world. Okay. Yes. That's one way to build a mega church. <laughs> but the but the point was, it was done because. Was, they were agricultural societies by and large, mm -hmm. and they felt that with this with this sexual intercourse going on inside the temple, and their gods Baal, for example, and whoever Ishtar, Ish Ishtar. Yeah. that they the gods seeing men doing that, hmm, that they would decide that they would do that, and that would bring fertility to the land. That at least was the stated purpose. So the point is that, that men, their purpose in prayer was to influence God and change his mind. Cause him to do something, right? Right. Isn't that rebellion? Well, but these are the pagans. Yeah. Of course so it is. They're, they're in rebellion. Well, their, their life is rebellion. Yeah. I yeah. mean, okay. So, now, to let you know, I mean, this was a, a fact. Even the scriptures talks about this because in, in Deuteronomy 23, it says, none of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. Mm. So it was something that, that the church or the people of God were aware of, and God spoke against and said, don't you do this. Mm. So all of that said, just to understand that the religious rituals of those people were intended to control their gods. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. I want to start by saying the primary purpose of prayer is for the Lord to control us, to influence us, to give us instruction, instruction. and direction. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So let's start here in Matthew chapter 6 from the Sermon on the Mount. Now, consider this. The Sermon on the Mount is the first time that Jesus gathers his disciples, appoints the apostles, and then what does he do? He is training them in righteousness. The Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, says that all scripture is God-breathed and profitable for training in righteousness. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them in the Sermon on the Mount that now they're going to be the light of the world, they're going to be the salt of the earth, he's and he's training them in right behavior, right living, right relationship with him to go out and represent him in the world because we indeed are the ambassadors of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So in Matthew 6, starting in verse 5, it says, When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Mm -hmm. So he starts this by saying, when you pray. So the question becomes, when are you supposed to pray? Without ceasing. Well, that's what it says. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. So we're supposed to be devoted to prayer. We're supposed to be praying all the time. If prayer is two-way conversation with God, and anything that's not done in faith is sin, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, you better be living a prayerful life, mm -hmm. listening to the Lord God all the time, okay? If you correctly understand that it's two-way conversation, you can be in prayer even when you sleep. That's right. Okay? Because our spirit never sleeps. And God, it says in Scripture, God can speak to you in, in dreams and in visions while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. So, as I say, Paul 
told us to be devoted to prayer. That's in his letter to the Romans, right? Romans 12, 12. He said it to Ephesus 6, 18, and to the Colossians. I mean, this is, this is something that was constant with him. You have to be, you know, I talk about, um, if you, if you read our little blogs on the front page of our, I say all the time, I have, I've come to understand, and this has been, that like when we're having the Bible study tonight, mm -hmm. I prepare for that. Yes, yes. I don't prepare for it. I prepare for it. Mm -hmm. That Sermon on the Mount, the most glorious sermon, the most radical sermon ever preached. You know, Jesus spent the night in prayer yes, he did. prior to teaching that. He was getting pre-prayed. He said he didn't speak anything that he didn't hear from the Father. Well, how did he hear from Father? He was that in night in prayer. Yes. Okay. So whatever you're doing, you should be able to, you should be able to say that God told you to do it. Mm -hmm. You should have a confidence because it's of His Word, right? Mm -hmm. Don't use meaningless repetition. Well, if, if ever there was a prayer that has become meaningless repetition. It is a way so many people pray what is incorrectly called the Lord's Prayer. Right. And I say incorrectly because it's not the Lord's Prayer. It was, it's not even, he didn't, tell, teach, he didn't teach us a prayer to repeat. He told us this is a pray in this way. It's a model of prayer, right? right. It's instruction on how we should pray, not words we're supposed to right. pray. He didn't say pray this prayer. And so many people pray the Our Father. I mean, it's just by rote. It's just mm -hmm. coming. It's not. It's not coming from their hearts. It's coming from somewhere in the back of their brain, mm -hmm. all right? From memory. From from memory. You know, we said it says in the Bible that we're the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. How would it be if you talked to your spouse and you said the same thing? You'd, You'd bore, be like a robot. You'd bore him to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's why. It, it's not supposed to be mean. God wants to hear from your heart. He searches the heart, all right? And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So uh, if you're saying this prayer by road, it's not coming from your heart. It's coming from your memory and your brain. Think Isaiah 29. I mean, Isaiah is what an incredible prophet he was. 29, 13. He says, then the Lord said... Because his people draw near to me with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. He's talking about the fact that his own people, mm -hmm. they're, that's exactly what they're doing. Their reverence consists of tradition learned by rote. It's just repetitive action. It has absolutely no meaning. But it's not coming from the heart. Jesus said that to the Pharisees in, in Mark chapter 7, starting in verse 6. He said, and he said to them, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hip hypocrites, as, this, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, you are experts in setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. When we lean on our own understanding, which it says in Proverbs 3, 5, don't you do this, right? right. right. This is what happens. We start doing things by rote from memory, and we're, there's no relationship. Just like Mark said, you know, if that's, if that's your relationship with your husband or wife or even your children, you say the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and over, and it's not coming from your heart. You think that that's not visible? Of course it is. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. But these people, so many people that pray, think that God is going to hear them because of their many words. Mm. However, be on guard. Because, you know, prayer is about, as I say, two-way conversation. We have to train ourselves to listen to God. So listen to the Lord here. Where there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. Mm. But he who restrains his lips is wise. That's Proverbs 10, 19. That's what God has to say about many words, right? What he wants to hear, well, I'll go back to Proverbs 25, 11 says, like apples of gold and settings of silver is a word spoken in right circumstances. God wants to hear from you and he wants you to hear him. When you're in love with somebody, you know, it's you, you want to communicate with one another. 
And by the way, remember, communications isn't always verbal. It's actions. It's actions. So I, I started by talking about what's the purpose of prayer? The purpose of prayer, the primary purpose of prayer, I believe, is to get us to listen to God. And it's not about changing God's mind, but to change our minds and change our hearts. All right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you trust in God, if you truly believe, if you're a person of faith, knowing that if God so loved you, as Scripture says, as Paul wrote in Romans 8, that he gave his only begotten son, he gave his son Jesus Christ, what good thing would he withhold from you? You don't have to go and convince God to be nice to you. Look at the cross. You don't have to convince God to be good to you. Look at the cross. You don't have to convince God to give you what you need. Look at the cross. The reasons for these studies is for us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to get our mind in line with the scripture, right? You know, the apostle James, James wrote, the, the, the effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much, right? Yes. When can, your, when, when can you have that assurance that your prayers are effective? Well, again, it's right there. Yeah, you know, God's not leaving stuff to chance. Yeah. He has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So he spoke through John. And in 1 John 5.14 it says, This is the confidence we ha which we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If he hears us, it's a done it's deal. A done deal. Mm -hmm. The purpose of prayer is to influence us. So we know what his will is. So we can pray in accordance with his will. We're going to look at, the, at the, what we call the Our Father. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at what is often and inaccurately called the Lord's Prayer. Because it's not the Lord's Prayer. No. Okay, this is the prayer he gave or the model of prayer he gave for the church. And this I'm thinking too, it's the attitude that we have to go into prayer with. It's always about attitude. Right. So it's an attitude of praise and worship. It's an attitude of repentance. And again, and it ends with the attitude of praise and worship. It's not, it's not a mistake that this teaching that we've been doing for weeks called the attitude of the righteous mm -hmm. goes from purpose to praise to praise to power to perspective to perseverance and then, and then to prayer. Because this is the good order of God. God yes. is a God of good order. Yes, he is. So if, if you've got all this other thing, all these other things lined up before you get to the prayer, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have some powerful yeah. prayer. You're going to have a powerful oh, prayer life. See, yes. It's the truth. And God desires that you have a powerful prayer life. But I was going to, going to say, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the Lord's Prayer is very simple. The Lord's Prayer is not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, I'm praying that this is where that transformation of our minds is taking us. To where we're not seeking what's nicest for us, what's best. We're yes. seeking God's will, that his will will be accomplished. Because you want to know something? He knows better than we do. Absolutely. All right. The prayer is for the Lord to influence us. Yes. It says in Isaiah 59, 1, that the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save. Neither is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. Mm -hmm. God hears you, okay? He's not far off and he's not deaf. Mm -hmm. Prayer doesn't need to be loud. I'm going to say this and I hope I don't offend you. It doesn't need to be King James. Mm -hmm. All right? It doesn't matter if you holler help or helpeth. And you don't need microphones blasting. No, blasting, yes. <laughs> okay, so but that's... What we want is to have a dynamic, powerful prayer life mm -hmm. so that we can be influenced by God and in turn go out and in, be an influence in the lives of other people. Okay? To encourage one another and to bring the good news to the lost. And it'll have power. There are different kinds of prayer. Okay? And we're going to look at that. First of all, I mean, basically, and this is basic. You know, don't think I can teach everything here. I'm trying to encourage you and all of us to get, back to to get into the Word, have conversations with the Lord, because it's the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth is going to lead you into all truth. And give us understanding. This is, this is like a, a primer. Mm -hmm. You know, let's prime the pump, and hopefully. 
there's individual prayer and there's corporate prayer. Individual prayer is different than corporate prayer. And like I said, it doesn't have to be fancy. I, I talked about help or helpeth. You know, Alice and I lived for a couple of years on a converted bus motorhome as it traveled around the country preaching and teaching. And it was a nice bus. It had a very nice interior. I, I actually, I've actually built, built the bus. It, yeah. You designed it. I designed and built it. it, but it had a nice interior. It had a nice refrigerator. It had a nice this and a nice that. The only thing it didn't have was a gas gauge. Right. That's right. <laughs> we had two fifty-gallon gas tanks, one on either side, but I didn't have a gas gauge. Yeah. Which led to some excitement at times. That and, was that was traveling by faith. Yeah. And one of those times, we were driving. I think we were in the mid-Atlantic states, or like in the Carolina. Carolinas. I think we were in North Carolina. Yeah. And I'm driving down the road, and all of a sudden there's sputter, sputter, sput, sput, sput. Yes. <laughs> and I know we're out of gas. I flipped the switch between tanks. Nothing. No just gas. No gas. Okay. And this is a long, straight stretch of road with nothing in front of us. So I, I prayed. You opened the window on the side. So I kind of stuck my head out so and shouted at the top of my lungs, Jesus! <laughs> That's right. It says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall That's be saved. Right. Now, this may sound silly, but that's exactly what I did. I yes, stuck my head did. out and shouted Jesus in the bus. Went, and and ran. continued on. And we went about another mile and a half and came up on a gas station. And as we pulled up to the tanks, it went sweat, 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 sweat and, and died. died. <laughs> I, I believe the word. Amen. I believe it. And I'm not afraid of looking silly. I'm not afraid of trusting in the Lord. I'm not afraid of acting upon the word as I understand the word and God reveals it to me. And if it looks silly to people, you know what? I think it put a smile on God's face. Yes. I've, see, I've seen it, I'll tell you what. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there is the practice of prayer. Okay? In individual prayer. And it should, prayer should be our practice. Because I want to read you some, a couple of verses. Okay. From Mark 135. And in the early morning, while it was still dark, he, Jesus, arose and went out and departed to a lonely place and was praying there. As was his habit. Right? As was his habit, yeah. okay? Because in Mark 6, it says, and after biding them, his disciples, farewell, he departed to the mountain to pray. He went off by himself mm -hmm. to pray, right? Mm -hmm. And in Luke 22, it says, he came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples also followed him. And when he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter temptation and withdrew from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and began to pray. Luke 22, 39 to 41. You see, so Jesus would go off on his own to pray. I don't know that you have to go off on your own, but get in the practice of praying. Make it a habit. Have conversation. And when you know that it's not about how many words, when you know that it's about the fact that you're his brother, and the father is your your father, who you can call Abba. It's not about how formal you are or how many words you say. Just get in the habit of talking with God. It will change your life. So come back again next week, and we're going to get more and more into this. And I pray it's going to change all of us. I, I pray that it's going to be an encouragement to learn what a true, effective, powerful, power-filled prayer life is all about. So until then, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that we can come with confidence. We can come with boldness before your throne in the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, that you'll not reject us, that you will hear our prayer. But Lord, I pray that our prayer would be to hear you, that we might hear you clearly and grow in our faith. And I ask that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Be back again next week. Love you. Bye. Lord, there is none like you All of my days I want to praise The wonders of your mind